This is Dr. Tio Wan Lin, and welcome to this week's Dermatology Flash Briefing. The Moderna COVID-19 vaccine apparently causes swelling and inflammation in patients with cosmetic facial fillers. The FDA Advisory Committee reviewing the new Moderna vaccine has come out to state this very specific side effect that has involved several trial participants who have had cosmetic facial fillers. I want to just quickly share with you guys today what exactly this is about, how it occurs, and if that's something we ought to be worried about. Now, what exactly are dermal fillers? Dermal fillers are used primarily for facial augmentation. The filling agents are meant to restore fullness in one's uh, facial skin appearance that could be lost over time um, with age as a result of subcutaneous fat atrophy or a side effect um, of certain medications such as retroviral treatment. The ideal facial filler has the following properties. First of all, it should have physiologic compatibility with your body tissues, meaning that it readily incorporates itself with your tissues, um, minimizing complications or side effects, and ideally, hopefully it doesn't degrade too much with time. This is not the case for the commonest type of facial filler uh, used in cosmetic practices, which would be the hyaluronic acid base fillers. And uh, these are actually uh, relatively easy to administer and have good cosmetic outcome. Alternatives such as those with are collagen base, hydroxyapatite base, um, Sculptra is from polyalactic acid. In terms of the known side effects from using these facial fillers as injectables, some of the common complications that occur would be uh, local injection site tenderness, bleeding, bruising. When lumps and nodules occur, this is usually because of inappropriate injection techniques or accumulation of the filler in a more superficial location than expected. Now, what's happening with the Moderna vaccine and this painful facial swelling that occurs where facial fillers have been previously injected is best thought of as an allergic reaction or basically an immunologically mediated reaction. The key thing here is that the process of injecting a vaccine essentially causes the immune system to be stimulated to produce antibodies against this vaccine. That in turn results in the body being hypersensitive and then recognizing that the facial filler, in that case, is not a part of the body tissues and the body then starts to mount an immunological reaction against it. Based on the cases that were reported to the FDA, the profile of these patients essentially um, you know, were that they had swelling and inflammation in that area that was administered the filler. A couple of the patients had the cheek filler six months prior to the vaccine. One patient had lip filler done just two days after the vaccine. In all of these scenarios, the patients were treated with oral steroids, antihistamines, and it was observed that their reaction resolved. Moving deeper into the topic, what exactly is an allergic reaction? Typically, it's considered a medical event due to uh, an immune system response to a perceived allergen. It is not likely that these individuals would have developed this response had they not been given the vaccine. The reason is because facial fillers are medically engineered to be biocompatible, but in the case where you've had a vaccine, your immune system will start to detect that these substances, you know, which were injected, are actually not part of your um, you know, typical, your normal body tissues. As a dermatologist, I have some opinions with regards to the observation of these adverse events. First of all, we do expect that massive rollout of vaccinations against the COVID-19 virus is expected to happen internationally. And I feel that it's a very important part in ensuring that we get some level of control and, and, and immunity in a very severe pandemic like COVID-19. In terms of immunological reactions that are occurring in response to facial fillers in this case, we note that the uh, attending dermatologist had actually treated these patients with oral steroids. We know that oral steroids suppress your immune system. And in fact, if you're living in an area where COVID-19 is in circulation in the community, it does make you more vulnerable to the virus. 
Personally, I have not given oral steroids.、Um, I mean, I have avoided it as much as possible in the last、uh, few months、uh, for a lot of my patients who otherwise,、um, you know, would have benefited from steroid therapy for chronic inflammatory disorders such as severe eczema. I have just been a lot more cautious in terms of exploring other therapies before using oral steroids. The reason is because it's been well established to worsen the prognosis in the event you do get COVID, and also because it reduces your body's natural immune system response. So you're definitely going to be more susceptible to catching COVID. The answer is not an easy one. Facial fillers are used in millions of people internationally, and it is not as if it is the first time we are hearing of an adverse reaction. Another known complication from facial filler injections that is relevant in the context of the、um, Moderna vaccine would be non-allergic inflammatory responses. We call these granulomatous reactions. Now the key thing is, unlike these、um, allergic reactions which happened in the Moderna vaccine,、uh, granulomatous reactions don't occur so quickly, and by that we mean really quite long term, like five years. And the key here is that we do not have long term data as to what vaccination would do in terms of individuals who are going to have fillers, or have had fillers, and who are going to receive the vaccine. These granulomatous reactions are usually non-painful lumps, and it is all a part of inflammation that is caused by the immune system being stimulated. In fact, in 2017, there was a case report about a granulomatous reaction to a dermal filler that was hyaluronic acid-based in the Journal of Cosmetic and Laser Therapy. A granulomatous reaction is a delayed onset type of reaction involving、um, an inflammatory nodule that is usually painless, unlike the allergic reaction we've seen so far. And the key, again, as I、uh, had emphasized earlier, is that it's occurring much later、um, than the so-called allergic reactions in individuals with painful swellings. The An important thing、um, is that in order for us to diagnose、um, an immune-mediated、uh, reaction,、uh, certain ones are actually delayed. For example, the granulomatous types of reactions, which are well-established complications, albeit rare,、um, of facial fillers, and it's going to take、um, a, a longitudinal study for as long as five years from now. If、um, you know we start doing the the collection of data before we can truly determine if it was、um, is going to be a problem for individuals. Who received the vaccine and also had the facial filler injected? In 2015, in the Journal of Dermatologic Surgery, there was a series whereby the author conducted a retrospective chart review of patients who were treated with HA fillers within a five-year period to evaluate for delayed onset nodules. The conclusion was that although these nodules are pretty uncommon, it is important for us to be aware of this side effect and to have a management protocol in place. And in conclusion, the authors also said that from these patient responses,、um, as well as a review of the literature, these nodules are immune mediated in nature, and these are the granulomatous type reactions, which are not the type of reactions which、um, individuals who、uh, develop painful swellings after the Moderna vaccine were actually diagnosed with. What I'm trying to say is that because we are currently in an unprecedented public health situation、um, internationally, and where we are, you know, having to face a raging pandemic that's deadly, we we may have to reconsider the risk that we might be taking with aesthetic treatments. Now, I do perform facial filler and Botox injections, but the truth is, vaccinations are going to be a priority for most people and most countries in order for us to get the pandemic under control. I feel that、um, the key here is, first of all, informed consent. That、uh, physicians should actually be more aware that、um, patients have a right to understand the implications of receiving a facial filler.、Uh, you know, in a, a pandemic situation、um, where we are advocating,、um, you know, that everybody gets a vaccine, and. 
they also have to realize that we are not going to be 100% certain how these facial fillers will further on be affected by these vaccines. For example, the development of granulomatous reactions. However, if you already had a facial filler, I certainly don't think that should deter you from getting a vaccine because these are established complications. And if you do have a complication, visit an accredited dermatologist who will be able to diagnose it accurately and treat it. A word of caution here, not all painful filler-related swellings are due to an immunologic response to the vaccine. Depending on the characteristics observed during clinical examination, and your dermatologist will also evaluate you for other differential diagnoses, which may also include atypical infections. These are usually a result of poor aseptic technique, which introduces environmental bacteria, usually mycobacteria, into the deeper tissues. Overall, my two cents is that if you are thinking of getting a facial filler, you can certainly afford to wait. The reason is because um, the cost of human life in this pandemic is, is simply too great and it should outweigh any considerations that one may have. You can certainly get a filler and also get the vaccine, now the vaccine being of priority, but be prepared for this complication, which can be treated uh, by a dermatologist. But usually that involves administering oral steroids, and we know that oral steroids in the event that you do get COVID, um, it's going to change your prognosis for the worse. The... Uh, human facial structure is, is a composite of skin, the epidermis and the dermis, the subcutaneous fat, the smas layer, um, and the muscles. Aging affects all these structures dynamically, and fillers actually only address one part of the aging equation, which is restoration of volume. In terms of restoring facial structure and facial sagging, um, it can be corrected with other technologies, such as radio frequency, um, which is also present in home devices, okay? high-intensity focus ultrasound, high foo, uh, which do not involve injection of other substances into your body tissue. So all of these will be safe in the event that um, you, know, you are receiving a vaccine. A board-certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon will be able to advise you on these options. Advances in our understanding of textile cosmeceuticals in the form of polysaccharides, polymers, nanoparticle materials can synergize with topically applied uh, active ingredients um, in cosmeceuticals and create an optimal skin environment, a microenvironment that stimulates collagen production. In conclusion, if you have had a facial filler before, don't let that deter you from getting the vaccine as the cost of human life, both your life as well as those around you, is much greater. And this is actually a known filler complication. Well, it is definitely enhanced by the vaccine, but the benefits in this situation of getting the vaccine will definitely outweigh the risks. However, if you are thinking of getting fillers done, my personal opinion is that you may wish to consider alternatives for the time being, given the current context of our uncertain pandemic. Any sort of adverse reaction with a filler injection is certainly uh, far from ideal and will also affect the final outcome of the injection. Well, that's it for this week's Dermatology Flash Briefing. Thank you for tuning in. Until the next episode.